Polynomial inequalities. Let us try to understand how to solve polynomial inequalities. With this example, I will show you two different ways of solving inequalities. One is algebraic method, the other one is graphical method, right? So here we have a polynomial equation which is x plus 5 times x plus 2 times x minus 3 whole square greater than 0. Now, if you note, you can find the zeros of this. It is already given to you in factored form. If a polynomial is not given to you in factored form, you need to factorize first and then follow the steps which I'll discuss with you now. So from the given equation, we can write the zeros, the real zeros, I should say. So the real zeros are the x-intercepts are at x equals to x plus 5 is equal to 0 gives us minus 5, right? And x plus 2 equals to 0 gives us a value of minus 2. x minus 3 whole square will give us 0 at x equals to 3, right? Now, I wrote it. Now, let me show you how I got these values. So, to get these values, you have to basically equate them to 0. That means you write x plus 5 equal to 0 and solve for x. So, you get x equals to minus 5. And then, you will do x plus 2 equals to 0, solve for x. So, x is minus 2. Do you see that? And then, you have to do x minus 3 equals to 0 and you get the number 3. So x equals to 3 will give you 0 for this factor. Now, if one of them is 0, then the whole polynomial will be 0, correct? So that is kind of important thing to understand. So first thing is to get the zeros. The next step for us is, so this is the first step. If you are given equation factored form, the next step for us is you should understand that zeros divide your plane into intervals, right? So, so, so you just figure out what are the intervals in which these zeros will divide the plane, right? So that is what you have to look for. So what I will do here is I will draw a line, a number line, and then we'll work from there and show you intervals on the number line. So let me just draw a number line like this. This is a number line which goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. And on this number line, will plot our zeros. So zeros are at minus 5. So we say 0 is at minus 5. Since we are looking into inequality which is greater than and does not have equal to sign, that means that part is not included in our solution. And therefore I'll use a hole here, okay? Not plugged in, right? So this is what we have. So we have 0 at minus 5. So this is at minus 5. And then when we have at minus 2, so let me write clearly, minus 2 and 1 at 3. So let's say this is 1 is at 3. Okay. So we got these three zeros with us. Now as you can see, a polynomial is a continuous function. So at a 0 it can go straight, I mean, or it could turn, correct? So in any way, there is a possibility of change in sign for a polynomial function around zeros. So that is kind of important to understand. And it is this property which we utilize in solving polynomial inequalities. So that is the base for all our work which we are going to do in this chapter. Right? So, remember, x-intercept or the real zero is a point where the polynomial sign can change. And if the sign changes, we know one part is a solution of this inequality. I hope you appreciate that part, right? So this is how uh, this is the base for us to solve any polynomial inequality. For that matter, the policy is same whether it is polynomial or a rational function or any other function, right, when we are doing inequalities. Now, as we can see here, we do have different intervals in which these zeros have divided. The intervals for us are from minus infinity to minus 5 and from minus 5 to minus 2. This interval is from minus 2 to 3, and then we have an interval from 3 to infinity, right? So, three zeros will divide the plane or the number line, whatever you may say, in four intervals. Now, the idea is to check in which interval is this function positive. 
if we know it is positive it's part of our solution right so what we can do is we can just pick up different test points right so we'll do test points so these test points should be in the interval itself so that is kind of very important to understand intervals and a test point within the interval so let us say the test point within this interval on the left side of minus 5 could be minus 6 right test point between minus 5 and minus 2 could be minus 4 and between minus 2 and 3 0 is a good test point and after 3 we can take 5 as our test point right so these are our test points now what we have to do is we have to just compute the result plug in minus 6 here and see whether you get negative or positive plug in minus 4 and check whether you get negative or positive right since it is a linear 0 it has to cross the line so one of them is a part of solution for sure right now either you can use calculator and plug it in and find the answer at this stage or what I prefer here is to analyze each factor so we'll analyze each factor so what we'll do is we've got these three factors here so I'll write down all my factors here my factors are so I'm saying analyze factors so that is my step number next step right so I have these factors here and my factors are let me write in a different ink so our my factors are x plus 5 this is my first factor the next one is x plus 2 and the third one is x minus 3 whole square right so these are my factors now I'll just draw some horizontal lines so that we don't really get confused what we you know the values may get mixed up so, so I'm drawing these horizontal lines so that we understand let me draw one here also okay it runs out of ink okay now so what we will do here is for each factor we will check the sign so for for example in the very first factor which is x plus 5 if I plug in minus 6 I get a negative value we are not really interested in the number minus 1 we want to check the sign right so minus 6 plus 5 gives us negative number so I can write negative here but when I put minus 4 here minus 4 plus 5 gives me a positive number 0 for x will give me positive number 5 right and if I plug in positive 5 5 plus 5 is plus 10 so I'll just write plus here similarly I'll test these test points for the other factors the other factors is 6 x plus 2 minus 6 for x gives me negative minus 4 for x gives me negative 0 gives me positive and this is also positive remember this is squared so whether we have minus or plus it will always result into a positive value correct so that is our sign for each factor and the last step is check the function itself so the function f, f of x is basically equal to product of these factors that is x plus 5 times x plus 2 times x minus 3 whole square so when you multiply all of them then basically you are multiplying these signs so when you multiply these signs two negatives will result into a positive right do you see that one negative will result into negative all positives will give you positive all positives will give you positive do you see that so we get positive signs it really means that this particular function is going to be positive in these three intervals this interval this interval and that interval so in these three intervals we get positive results that means that is a part of our solution do you see that so we get our answer and from here we can say the answer is that x belongs to these intervals so this is which one from minus infinity to minus 5 right so x belongs to real number where x is between so let me write them in we can write in different notations so I use this for the time being minus infinity to minus 5 minus infinity to minus 5 or it could be from minus 2 to minus 3 or it's plus 3 here or union 
from 3 to infinity, right? 3 to infinity. So that becomes a solution for us. Do you see? So these are the steps in which we can algebraically, with the help of table of values or you can say intervals, find the result, right? So that is how you solve these kinds of questions. Now, let me show you a graphical approach which is extremely, extremely beautiful. Now, you know this is a polynomial. Leading coefficient is positive, right? Positive means right side up. So we have right side up. Now the degree is 2 plus 1, 3 plus 1, 4. Degree 4 means even. That means both sides are up. Do you see? Both face the same side. Now I'll just draw a small polynomial graph here representing the situation so that we can go right side up. As you know, these two are linear roots. So if we start from left side, the graph will cross, right? Here it will cross again since this is even root, so it will bounce back like a parabola. So we get a polynomial graph here, which is kind of like this. Do you see that? I'm just trying to break it up for you to understand, see, and, and draw it. Do you see that? So that becomes our polynomial. From this graph, you can see it is positive from minus infinity to minus 5. So that is our part of solution. Do you see that? Minus infinity to minus 5. It is positive from minus 2 to 3. That's it. And from 3 to infinity, you get your answer straight. So, if you draw, sketch your graph, after getting the zeros, you could write down the answer, right? But, you know, that's an easy way out and most effective way. I will suggest adopt this method when you do multiple choice questions or if it is not specified that follow a particular method. Okay, so whenever they say algebraic solution or using intervals or table of values or whatever, then you have to do all this which I explained you. If that is not mentioned, just sketch your polynomial, write down your answer. That's it. I hope you enjoy both the processes in which we have got the answer. And now we'll move on to further questions on inequalities. Thank you and all the best.